How's it going? So today I'm coming at you with an update to the Hassan Piker vs. H3H3 drama. So, basically, the big is part of this update is that it seems like Leftovers is over. No! Oh, oh, Ethan and Hassan, they just seem like such good friends. I was really invested, you know, in their relationship. No, I think that a lot of people... <laughs> either expected this and they're like disappointed or whatever or they expected it and they're kind of happy about it you know what i mean they kind of were hoping some chaos would ensue and i guess chaos ensued here's a clip of ethan kind of confirming that this is the case that their relationship has kind of dissolved or at the very least he's not going to be doing the podcast with him people are saying rip leftovers um yeah yeah probably just to be honest we could just call it Leftovers. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> Le I, wouldn't that be f***ed up if I was like, Leftovers is coming back. That is f***ed up. <laughs> Why does he always look so sick every time that uh, I see him, bro? <laughs> and I remember he had, uh, there's a big, uh, I guess, conversation, confrontation type of situation um, that Ethan had with his son, I guess. You know I'm not a f***ing radical Jew. I'm not even a religious Jew. No, I have I, no I know. fucking, I have no stake in the game. And this is coming from... I, I know, I know. Basically, long story short, from what I understand, Ethan was not happy with the way that Hassan was framing the Israel-Palestine conflict. Uh, to his fans and Ethan wanted Hassan to keep his fans and you know audience more accountable to like not uh, basically leaning into Ethan for being more sympathetic to the Israeli side right in that video he looks like the most unhealthy I've ever seen a human being that's cap but like he looks like he's you know uh withered let's just put it like that anyway in this video smiling he looks happy but uh it looks like he has some kind of cold or flu or whatever i don't know this man's health man uh you know take care of yourself because in life usually nobody else will you gotta take that into your own hands we could just call it leftovers <laughs> oh, that's so good Fucking classic <laughs> ethan pog bro. Le I, wouldn't that be fucked up if i was like leftovers is coming back that is fucked right. up <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. But well, you know, we've, we've never been... done that before, right? right? <laughs> we've never. <laughs> um. Anyway, so right there, as you can tell, I don't know. You tell me. Does Ethan seem heartbroken about this arrangement? I don't think so. Okay, I don't think these guys were actually ever friends. Realistically, hey, who the fuck am I? I don't know them. Yeah, you're right. But look, there's a very clear difference, especially hey, if I'm just going to be anecdotal, we're just going to have some fun. With people living in LA, there seems to be a pattern, especially, you know, content creators, whatever. Content, bro. You know what I mean? H3, even with Trisha Paytas, he saw a similar fucking pattern. Spicy individual. Very, you know, unpredictable, whatever you would say. Kind of blows up. Drama. People talk about it. Garners interest. And, yeah, I mean, the exact same formula has more or less played out. The unfortunate thing, though, is that it is in the backdrop of a very serious global fucking conflict. Again, again, being the, uh, you know, situation in Israel-Palestine. And so that's why, as I've been saying to me, I look at these dramas and I think in my head like, yeah, okay, H3 is going to be okay. I think you'll be okay not having Hassan Piker as a friend, you know? Something tells me. But yes, that leads us to a lot of people have been criticizing or basically just arguing against Hassan Piker, uh, specifically with the Israel-Palestine situation, but also like his past coverage of situations, particularly Willie Mack show. Uh, Willie uploaded two videos um, talking about Hassan and his lazy coverage, how he's, you know, basically a bad on-the-ground journalist or whatever. I believe that Hassan wasn't actually claiming he was an on-the-ground journalist. It was just kind of a joke that Willie was like putting in, basically. First of all, I'm not a journalist. I've never said I'm a journalist. You when do, I talk you said about you do, you do reports from the ground, bro. That's what you said. When I said I do reports from the ground, where yeah. where is that from? If I said that, I probably misspoke. I mean, it's more be me being facetious. But if you want to watch it, we can watch it. Are, Everyone are knows you're not saying that I'm on the ground reporter. You just sit in your fucking house.
I've never okay. said that I do on the ground reporting. Yeah, I know. I know. No, everyone knows you don't actually do on the ground. Wait, so why did you bring that up then? I was just giving you shit. But basically that manifested in the most painful debate I have probably ever seen. And I think the main reason it was painful, yes, definitely because Hassan was very, you know, uninterested in talking, whatever. But also because Hassan clearly just didn't know any kind of context going into it. He just thought he was going to debate Willie about Israel-Palestine, but Willie was trying to talk about, like, his audit of Hassan's, um, you know, journalistic integrity and ability. So, basically... This is an hour-long debate, which is crazy. It really is impressive, to be honest, that Willie managed to get on here. From what I understand, Willie was not prepared to debate. Hassan just, like, demanded that he get on now. And he did it. He, you know, had the balls. He showed up, whatever. Hassan does concede on some of what Willie's saying, but he kind of backs down on it. Long story short, just a very unproductive debate. Willie has already made, you know, his own video covering this debate. So if you want, you know, to have that broken down for you, I'm sure there's just there's plenty of videos you can watch, but Willie's is probably the most efficient. At the end of the day, uh, the funniest takeaway kind of from this, aside from just like, you know, the arguing and stuff like that, was this dude, I think, yeah, Chapo Trap House dude, from what I understand, just chilling, smoking, and fucking literally saying fuck all for an hour. This is the landscape of our intellectual titans nowadays. This is who we get our information from. <laughs> hey, you know what? When you really think about it, this isn't very far from the level of quality you would get from your mainstream media news outlets. Sure, it's a different perspective, whatever, whatever. Mainstream outlets, uh, they don't exactly have a strong affinity to truth. Now, it's kind of interesting to me, right? You think to yourself, again, because... Willie's coverage, um, a lot of people have seen it, and I definitely, like, Willie's a solid-ass creator, so I understand why, because, and Hassan is obviously a very famous creator, whatever, but Willie's coverage is um, intended to not be really inherently political, okay? Very hard to avoid with topics like, you know, he's criticizing Hassan's coverage of Israel-Palestine, whatever, very hard to avoid being political, but um, that's Willie's intent, so... I want to kind of take focus for a sec and kind of ask, like, at the end of the day, yes, Hassan, whatever, his coverage, uh, irresponsible, whatever we want to say. But, like, the fact of the matter is that Israel, like, is the aggressor, absolutely, in Gaza, and they have gone well beyond any feasibly justifiable level of violence to act in uh, retaliation or whatever, right? Again, I've said this very explicitly. If you are going to take this from a humanitarian angle, if you're going to pretend to care about being a humanitarian, you would be advocating for a ceasefire. It's as simple as that. Now, this was a clip um, that I saw that people were using to criticize Hassan. It basically shows him speculating about the hospital bombing that occurred that has been the subject of much debate. If I make a prediction or a speculation, it can sometimes be wrong. IDF didn't bomb the hospital? Yes, it did! Yes, it fucking did! You fucking piece of shit! Yes, it absolutely did! Fuck you! Fuck you! Genocidal scumbag! You have- Anyway, so, basically the crit core criticism is that he's, you know, taking a side without knowing 100% whatever. Obviously, Hassan is quick to point out that, I believe it was the BBC, or, you know, an official news outlet, reported that this was an Israel bombing. So he was just going in line with what the MSM was saying. Long story short, though, um, he basically projects that onto his chat. And so, you know, the argument is that he fosters this perception in his chat. Now, I'm less interested in this whole, all of this, okay? The main thing that interests me about that debate, as I've stipulated before, is not a matter of did Israel bomb the hospital? I mean, maybe, you know, you would assume that they did, considering that they are, or at least were, time of that aggressively bombing Gaza, completely disregarding civilian life but it's of course possible that you know whatever else happened muslim jihad they claimed um had a misfire basically of course this is all possible i'm not an expert and i would be dumb to pretend that i am the real thing 
And this is something that I think people should be starting to re, you know, frame their way of approaching situations. It's not a matter of did Israel bomb it or did they not, okay? Whether they did or didn't at this particular hospital, it really doesn't make that much of a difference to me remotely. What makes the bigger difference or the question that I would be asking is why are we focusing on the hospital? Why, better question, have international governments, Canadian government, U.S. government, government of France, among a few others, done internal investigations through their own military departments and stated that they think that they are leaning toward it is more likely that Israel did not bomb the hospital. Why are international governments doing investigations and coming to those conclusions and announcing them? And yeah, it's pretty simple. It's just to protect Israel. It's to mitigate civil unrest because people are pissed off about the situation. Rightfully so. You know, I'm, I'm sure both sides, people have absolutely rights to be pissed the fuck off. Absolutely. No doubt. Now, uh, governments in general, obviously, with an ally like Israel, they have a lot more to gain than they would with an ally like Palestine. I'm, that's just the realist lens acting, okay? Um, they also have, through these ties to Israel, want to maintain this perception that what Israel is doing is just deserved retaliation. Okay, now Israel is certainly not doing what these other governments want at all. They do not like this, but they still are going to kind of try to not, you know, step on Israel's toes too hard, you know, risk fucking up trade relationships. This is the nature of PMC government fucking bureaucracy. You know what I mean? Um, you have to maintain the friendly face. It's not a matter of lying per se necessarily all the time although the israeli government lies all the time absolutely but it's an information war right there's lies on both sides what we're saying though is that news outlets governments whatever they certainly do not absolutely do not have to lie to misconstrue a situation okay pretty simple you just omit the inconvenient truths findings whatever and you publish, release, promote the findings that corroborate what you want them to corroborate. You know what I mean? The effect you want to have on a populace, whatever. Anyway, and so the point of that rant is basically to segue into talking about an interesting thing that I noticed, which is number one, Elon Musk going to Israel and talking and speaking, hanging out with Netanyahu. You can see that right here. This is a pretty kind of interesting thing because... Why is Elon Musk getting involved? Is it because he's a humanitarian? Maybe. I mean, any relief that he can potentially provide, absolutely appreciated on either side, whatever you want to say. Is it because he's a narcissist and he likes being in the limelight and looking like a hero? Yeah. That's... A pretty evident reality. You can say that's speculation on my part, but if you look and see, it seems pretty consistent that, yeah, Elon likes getting into the middle of situations like this and kind of um, having, you know, a lot of eyes on him or whatever. It's just a pattern of behavior that seems pretty obvious at this point. But of course, it's one of these things where if someone does something positive, even if it's for, you know, selfish intentions, whatever you want to say, they're still doing something positive. All good. Now, obviously, Mr. Musk is not impartial, okay? This is what you need to understand. Yeah, he's maybe a humanitarian, whatever, not impartial, okay? And to say that he has incentives to side with Israel would be a massive understatement, okay? Israel is a consumer demographic, okay? For many of his companies, bro, Tesla... Through SpaceX, his internet provider plan, Starlink, Twitter. Theoretically, you know, Israel could ban Twitter. Now, this incentive doesn't mean he's completely compromised. It just means that he can't really speak out against the Israeli government. And it doesn't really seem like he 
is that interested in doing that? You know what I mean? But anyway, in spite of all that, the one thing I can say is Twitter, it is a very solid kind of source of independent, you know, journalism on this topic, right? Of course, there's a lot of misinformation, all this stuff, but information that you would never, ever, ever see in mainstream media or on YouTube, okay? Because YouTube will instantly age restrict you, remove it, or demonetize you, actively de-incentivizes you confronting reality. Keep that in mind. That's YouTube's goal because they have interests. But the number one interest is money and pleasing advertisers and pretty quick way to piss off advertisers is to put ads on stuff related to this, right? Now, Twitter has been a place where you can see this kind of unfiltered, uncensored um, reality to an extent. You know what I mean? Again, there are mistruths, but there are glimpses of reality. And so, you know, respect the Musk for not clamping down at fucking super hard or whatever, as far as I've seen. Um, here's him talking. I would say an emotionally difficult day uh, to see the places where people were murdered. I just did a talk with the, the Prime Minister, and um, I think there's, I mean, obviously there, there, there are three things that need to happen uh, in, in the situation. I mean, there's no choice but to kill those who insist on uh, murdering civilians. There's exactly. no choice. Um, they're not going to change their mind. But, and then the second thing is to change the, the education so that a, a new generation of, of murderers is not trained to be murderers. Right, so you tell me how you interpret that, okay? Because I'm not going to cap. To me, that seems like a pretty clear statement. He's basically saying Israel has a right to destroy and kill or whatever, right? Like to attack Gaza. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a overt endorsement of the way that Israel's been going about doing that because... It's very obvious that they are actually much more interested in um, just causing mass death in Gaza than like specifically targeting Hamas. But certainly, certainly an interesting, um, you know, kind of world we live in where Elon Musk, who's not an elected official, he's just kind of a guy with money and of course companies. And yeah, he's kind of just going on like a press circuit um, <laughs> in Israel. It's funny. And then, the, and then the third thing, which is also very important, is to try to build prosperity. Right. Important. Build prosperity. What a slightly sinister way to put that. To build prosperity. Okay, maybe I'm just too cynical, but that sounds like he's saying, okay, so he wants to destroy us, he wants to re-educate Palestinians, and he wants to create prosperity, which I would imagine to Elon Musk means bring business opportunities, businesses, whatever, which I mean, prosperity in Palestine would be excellent. Um, I do believe he would like that though. I don't know what he's doing, you know, to bring that about maybe a lot, maybe not though. Who knows? I don't know. Is that boring to you? Cause to me, that's fascinating. Now I do want to say, thankfully, hopefully that situation continues to be thankful, but it seems as though there's been a ceasefire for the last four or five days between both factions involved in this conflict and many seemingly many hostages have been returned but yeah there's just like there's some joyful things to come out of this ceasefire um this guy i don't know if you guys have seen it i don't even want to show you because of how depressing it was but this guy he uh was on video shortly after the initial um incident saying that he was glad that his daughter died there was reports his daughter died he's saying he's glad because he was so fearful for what they could have done to her and it says uh, the irish girl nine years old thought to be killed by them reunited with dad who initially said her death would have been best possibility and um so yeah that's definitely a dub definitely a dub you know what i mean um so i don't know who or why it was thought that she was killed probably just because of the events that unfolded, I guess. But I don't know if they, like, confirmed it or anything. Uh, probably not. So, good thing that she's alive. Very, very thankful. Now, I want to take a second and explore a topic that I'm actually genuinely curious what you guys think, okay? So, pay attention. Again, I'm not really, right now, too interested in fixating on what personalities are saying. But, 
I do agree. Some personalities, whatever, should be held accountable or to a standard or, you know, scrutinized a little bit for how they uh, cover this situation. Uh, right. You're obviously seeing that with Hassan um, through Willie. And so I want to take a second and just take a peek at um, some of the stuff that I saw from Destiny, which I thought was actually very fascinating. Basically, from what I understand, he's pretty well outwardly, you know, just saying like I'm pro-Israel. Pro he obviously is very sympathetic to the Israeli side. And I mean, in general, I don't know a lot about Destiny and I don't take him super seriously just because um, he loves baiting people. This is a big part of his thing. He just likes baiting people. You know what I mean? So I'm not really trying to fall for bait or anything, but like, yeah, if I'm going to kind of try and distill his, I guess you could say, message or his ideas, pro-Israel um, believes retaliation is not fully justified, but to an extent is justified. And basically, before this conflict, he seemed to be pretty uninformed on the situation going on here, which is fair enough. Okay, you don't need to be informed on the politics going on everywhere. Thing is, is that um, it's one thing to be informed, uninformed, sorry, and then it's another thing to be completely uninformed. And then as you're learning things, be using them as ammo or as weapons to, you know, attack other people, which is kind of what I've seen from Destiny. You know what I mean? Like, it's true. It is true. He'll read stuff on Wikipedia and then very shortly after he will apply that newly learned logic in order to own people on Twitter. OK, that's just the truth. Now, I still think it's a good thing to learn. This is absolutely great. I don't think that it's the best thing to learn just to counter or to spite or like in full reaction to people you don't like or whatever, but it's still good to learn, okay? I respect it. And uh, I saw this meme, which I kind of like agree with the sentiment, right? Look at this foolish gnome, he's studying instead of having innate knowledge about every conflict on earth. And it's like, I guess this is Hassan, this is people basically, Hassan's fans, who say like, oh, look at this stupid fucking idiot. He, does, he didn't know anything and now he's speaking like he knows. And look, if you don't know about a conflict, then a conflict occurs, right? You don't know the history, a conflict occurs, you learn about the history. That's good. Solid. Um, be weary, you know, if you are learning about a conflict to confirm one of your prior biases, right? But, because that is kind of the case with Destiny from what I can tell. Like, he's just, just collecting ammo to support his side. He picked a side and then he is working backward to justify it, you know what I mean? A lot of people do that, though. That's fair enough. Um, but again, can't really say you're coming from a humanitarian angle, in my opinion. Now, what would corroborate um, that is clips like this, which uh, Destiny seemed to claim was taken out of context. I think this is actually kind of accurate context, like not the full extent of him wanting people to die. But just like his general sentiment is basically like, yeah, just, you know, just let Israel do whatever the fuck they're going to do. You know what I mean? Uh, which is uh, massacre civilians. So, yeah. Um, here we go. Honestly, uh, I'm pro I, Like, it's not, it sounds really shitty, but like, I think that Israel should just drop its fucking borders about where it is now. And basically, <laughs> Palestinians can go live in another place. That's, that's really shitty, but like, that's about where I'm at. Also, Destiny. Shara Al Assad is that this guy? Fuck! Wait, which who? Wait, who is this? Who are these people? Fuck! Am I just supposed to know? <laughs> they basically um, counter it by showing that he's not amazingly informed, really, you know, at all on current day politics going on in these landscapes, whatever. I do think that history is more important than current news. Um, you don't need to know every fucking everything, I guess, to cover a conflict, whatever. But it does speak to a bit of naivety, okay, on Destiny's behalf to make a claim as uh, bold as that. Probably just to farm conflict and controversy. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it just speaks to uh, naivety, right? It speaks to someone who is very unself-aware, right? Or just trolling, right? No, I was thinking in my head, I was like, because uh, I know Destiny used to be like very, very sympathetic to Palestinians. Um, I remember he debated Lauren Southern years ago. This is just loose knowledge I have. Basically saying, you know, arguing against the human, or sorry, the human shields argument that people are making where it's like, oh, 
uses human shields. <laughs> so that's why, you know, Israel's just kind of ending up accidentally killing civilians, which is total cap. And Destiny agreed that it was more or less cap and like a bad argument years ago. Okay, when you're, you're saying you could find polls of Americans supporting bombing things, we're talking about them bombing ISIS. Yeah, you could find people saying civilian deaths are okay if we're killing a what large ISIS. What about if we talk about man. America supporting it's Israel just, that bombs just, hospitals and bombs schools, dog? It oh, doesn't matter you know, if the hospital. You know they bomb hospitals and schools because terrorist organizations in Palestine put their freaking weapons there. They no one. Do you think Palestinian sick that. people and children care about that? The little shitty fucking RPGs don't even make it over the walls because Israel is one of the most sophisticated anti-missile dome systems in the fucking world. You're really comparing the military power of these two states? Come on, dude. I'm saying the reason they're not just sitting there bombing hospitals and schools. You can't honestly believe they're just sitting there like, you know what, let's fucking bomb a hospital. Israel today. has I, literally been on record manufacturing not... reasons in the past <laughs> to march into the West Bank and fucking okay. exterminate people dog what do you okay, mean okay however today he doesn't really take the same stance as far as the civilians um go like making that overt separation very clear he doesn't really take that extra step however this actually his line of thinking today is not actually that different from what he thought years ago okay uh this isn't me just trying to own him or whatever the fuck it's just me showing you where he's coming from like this is kind of actually a pretty consistent line of thinking for destiny he not actually that interested in um humanitarian solutions that's the best way to put it you know what i mean okay so indigenous tribes people like if you just so wish to maybe mm -hmm. you just enjoy killing people you think it's not a moral issue to just matter an entire island of indigenous people who just you know who are hostile to outsiders if they're not capable of reciprocating then yeah go for it really it sounds like, really cold but yeah okay um like i see right <clears throat> so to me yeah it just makes it pretty clear like uh he's just not a humanitarian yeah I'm just this is a lens for me to kind of show that right yeah there's clips like this where it's showing kind of it's showing destiny basically um being unaware of who franco was who was he was a fascist leader in spain uh if you know george orwell George Orwell fought in the Spanish Civil War as an anarchist or with the anarchists. And long story short, the anarchists lost and Franco took over. Fascist rule, not very pleasant. Anyway, Destiny lacks history. He doesn't know that history, okay? It's pretty well-known knowledge. You should probably know it. I would hope, you know, but it's all good if you don't thing is there's a difference between you know you not knowing it and a dude like destiny who literally covers politics for a living but it's all good people have blind spots it doesn't really matter um but yes people who play this clip and use it as an own i get why i get why it's just it's not like the craziest point to me but he must be a fucking you loser. don't know francisco franco he's Bruh. got two dollar supporters brah two dollar supporters yeah. bashara al-assad is that this guy right and it's just more people showing he's uninformed again that's not a huge own like people are uninformed whatever it's more of an own when you contrast that with him speaking in the very brazen way that he does you know what i mean so anyway all that talk about destiny our boy fellow five foot four king right um representing us super well he got brought up in this video by a creator that i think is very, very solid, underrated in my opinion. And so whatever you think of the coverage, I do think that this creator has a strong affinity to truth, which I personally, from what I have seen, which I'm not a avid Destiny viewer, I do not think that I'm, Destiny actually has a strong fidelity to truth, okay? Feel free to disagree. I'm very curious to get opinions on this. But yes, this video by uh, GDF, I'm just gonna play you the first, you know, 30 seconds or so very solid video i would encourage watching it after this one again one little note the non-combatant uh, population in the gaza strip is really a so non-combatant means uh civilian non-existent term because so he's saying civilians don't exist in gaza all of the Gazans have voted for the hamas and as we have seen on the 7th of october most of the population in the gaza strip are Remember that the citizens of Gaza, these innocent civilians who so many people are shedding tears about, they voted for Hamas in the last election. I would encourage the other side to not so lightly 
throw around the idea of innocent Palestinian civilians, as is frequently said. Uh, People who say things like that should never be taken seriously, ever, ever. But they are. Such is the nature of our fucking society. Um, but yeah, no, if you say things like this, you are a complete fucking stooge, a rodent, an absolute fucking rat weasel who is not a humanitarian. <laughs> but uh, beyond that, you are also just a very, very useful idiot. Or intentionally just cool with innocents dying. Very cool with it. Like, I like that. Uh, I don't think we would so lightly throw around the term innocent Nazi civilians during World War II. They're Is a baby a civilian? I don't know. You tell me, egg-shaped head man. There are very few innocent Palestinian civilians. Oh, very few now. Uh, this is now, so that was, I guess, an American official. Some fucking idiot. I have no idea. Um, this is an Israeli official. It's an entire nation out there that is responsible. It's not true. This rhetoric about civilians not where we're not aware, not involved, it's absolutely not true. And I don't like how That's the mentality of the people orchestrating things in Israel, okay? Um now, as with every single thing that I, you know, say, I guess you could say whatever. Um there are absolutely parallels and things you could say about the operating government in Palestine. Okay, let's just word the H word, whatever, like that. They would probably view whatever Israeli citizens similarly, whatever. The difference is, is that um, Israel is backed by the world's largest military and receives literal state of the art funding as the most advanced war machines on the planet and is actively using them and exerting their power much more successfully. So there is a difference. People tried to differentiate between the Palestinians and Hamas. Yeah, that guy. If there's one thing you can say about that guy, one thing you can say about that guy. Well, he's not a humanitarian. They believe the same thing. The Palestinians hire Hamas to run their government. You pull them, they all love killing Jews. It's in their charter. There was a meme that I tweeted. In their charter. Okay. Yeah, so like a guy who doesn't know literally anything about the goings on. Just a useful, dumb idiot. Oh, wait, here's another one. Comparing, I think it was like the Palestinian flag to the Nazi one, which should have been a Hamas flag. Um, I agree that they're kind of separate people, although that's really hard to say for the Gaza Strip. I don't know if that's true for Gaza. There are a lot of people in Gaza who do not like Hamas. Fact. Who are not part of Hamas. Fact. Is they that, also that true? Because I feel, I thought my... Questioning that is so mentally insane, I cannot even begin to describe how demented, detached from reality you would need to be to question whether that is true. Do you think that a civilian population would be happy after the acting government, not elected anymore, keep in mind, not elected government since 2006, which we'll get into the elections. Keep in mind, almost half of the population of Gaza was not able to vote in that election who is alive today. So not currently a democratic reflection, right? But still, the point is, demented thinking you would need to have to even remotely ride this line speaks to a, a very disgusting level of detachment from reality. Because if, quite simply, honestly, a Palestinian were to think that every single Israeli, or let's just put it like this, the vast majority of Israelis support the current Israeli government, You'd be delusional. 
Would you be mad? Let's just say you're American. I don't know you. Not even a little bit. Would you be mad if, or would you be confused if you traveled somewhere else in the world and somebody, you know, says to you, oh, you're American? So you love Trump, right? Or you love the Republican Party? Well, that would be a pretty stupid thing to project onto individuals, civilians. When we get to the level where you're actively justifying the death of civilians through this logic, we're, we're not talking about you being stupid and a dumb puck. Uh, we're talking about you being a um, not humanitarian. If you think that the population of Gaza is not very, at least large factions of them are not very pissed off at the fact that this literal desolation has been brought upon them after the initial inciting incident that was orchestrated by the H word. Yeah, you'd be delusional, bro. Would you be happy with your government if you didn't elect them? You weren't even born when they came to power and they did something that would bring on unreal suffering for your people. Honestly, pretty easy calculation to make in my head. My understanding is Hamas has enjoyed pretty widespread support in Gaza since 2006. When approaching history, it's easy and convenient to otherize, dehumanize, and reduce nations of millions of people into neat little categories. It doesn't take any effort or critical thinking. It also makes people feel good about themselves and the side they support in any war. An embarrassingly naive and asinine assertion that their side is intrinsically good and the other is intrinsically bad. Yeah, okay, so in case it's not obvious, this isn't just a focus on destiny, okay? This is just me tackling that kind of mindset um, and giving you the lens, you know, the kind of just reality of the fact that civilians, there is always a separation. There is always a separation between civilians and a government. So some stats that get dropped in this video that are useful to you before I end this, okay? Um, sorry, and I'll end it on a, on a nice note, okay? Just because I know this is fucking horrendous. But um, long story short, 2006 election was democratically elected, okay? But what you need to understand is that it was not a majority that they won the election by, okay? They got 46% of the votes, the total votes, Right, similar to how Trump didn't get the you know majority or whatever, he won states. He won enough states. Similar thing happened. Okay, Fatah, which is the secular party. Okay, they got and Fatah got about fifty six percent of the votes. Okay, uh, Fatah and their you know the associated parties. So instantly, the election that the Big H won, they were not the majority. How did that happen? I mean, pretty simple. Uh, Fatah, the acting government at the time, very corrupt at that time, okay? After years and years and years, it did become the case that they were corrupt, okay? Um, and a testament to that fact is that by 2005, about 60%, 60% of their government's expenses were dedicated to paying salaries of government employees. In 2005, an appraisal was done, and 86% Palestinian civilians were polled, okay? Like, the, the polling came in. 86% of them thought that Fatah, the main big party, was corrupt, was inept, whatever you would say. And so, yes, the big H were violent. They had extremist um, practices. They were also uplifted tacitly by Israeli officials, this is documented, as a way, like a, you know, group to kind of um, confuse or act against 
fata and the PLO, okay? So not fully controlled opposition or anything like that, but like they were enabled by Israel until they started basically succeeding, you know what I mean, at their mission. But at the time of the fucking election as well, the two-state, whatever, the solution, the peace treaty, all this stuff, it wasn't even a hot-button topic. The biggest hot-button issue was corruption, okay? Um, and so that kind of undermined the whole um, prospect, even, or consideration of, like, the peace um, arrangement, right? And on top of all that, the majority of Fatah, voters, which again, were the majority, they were in favor of a two-state solution, okay? As well, one-third of Big H voters were also in favor of a two-state solution. That sounds like more than half to me, right? Especially, again, when you consider, oh, wait a minute, almost half the population is children that cannot vote. So that's all I got, okay? I'm sorry. That got, you know, a bit serious or whatever. But sometimes facing, confronting, and swallowing, digesting reality, it can inform your lens, okay? That's all I'm trying to do, kind of thing. Now, there is uh, something that I do want to clarify, which is that it is very true that this entire conflict, okay, this uh, situation, whatever, has emboldened a ton of legitimate anti-Semites, okay, whatever you want to call them, white nationalists, whatever words to mask it, etc. Yeah, those types are having a field day because, you know, right now it's very easy to conflate the Jewish religion with the Zionism, the state of Israel, whatever, okay? I just want to clarify, when I analyze shit like this, there's no fucking like inherent racial, I don't give a fuck, I don't care. You know what I mean? I think it's a sign of a very stupid person if you sincerely judge masses of people based on arbitrary variables that they didn't choose. You know what I mean? Anyway, what I'm getting at though is that there is a strong rise in anti-Semitism. <clears throat> and of course people say the Palestinians are Semites. Um, yeah, okay, there's a strong rise in anti-Jewish you know, Jewish sentiment, right? And uh, that is absolutely, largely brought on by the actions of the Israeli government. But to, you know, just the average Jew, like, they don't fucking deserve that shit. You know what I mean? At all. So don't be an idiot. Okay? So with that being said, let us enjoy, firstly, Anthony Bourdain. Rest in peace. Very honored for this award, the Impact Voices of Courage and Conscience Media Award. There was, however, very little courage, and one would hope an ordinary amount of conscience at work at producing our Israel-Palestine episode of Parts Unknown. I was enormously grateful for the response from Palestinians in particular, for doing what seemed to me an ordinary thing, something we do all the time, show regular people doing everyday things, cooking and enjoying meals, playing with their children, talking about their lives, their hopes and dreams. It is a measure, I guess, of how twisted and shallow our depiction of a people is, that these images come as a shock to so many. The world has visited many terrible things on the Palestinian people, none more shameful than robbing them of their basic humanity. People are not statistics. That is all we attempted to show. A small, pathetically small step towards understanding. To be recognized in this way means a lot to me and to all of us who worked on the show. And for that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And now I'll show you what more can I really add. I think this is the last video I will do on this most likely. Hopefully this ceasefire leads to a lasting ceasefire. We will see. Now that, you know, and as this conflict kind of deflates, yes, I would ask you to be a little bit just critical and aware of who Who's covering these situations, right? It's one thing to question the mainstream media, but you also got to question a little bit who you're listening to online. You know what I mean? You already know that, though. So I'm going to stop being a prick and uh, enjoy this fucking hilarious um, moment from a video game. I love seeing shit like this. It reminds me of when I was a fucking kid playing Black Ops. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> we fucking did it, boys. The forces. The forces. We did it. 
it, lads? We fucking won! Oh, fuck, wait! Hey, hey, wait, they're coming! <laughs> lads, they're coming! There's a fuck! They're all of them! Oh, wait, fucking give them feel, guys! Give them <laughs> okay, all right. I'm a dumbass. Um, thank you for watching. If you would like to support me, um, gokamerch.com. Best way, okay? We have crazy cool merch designs coming. Um, so, you know, sign up for an email list and you'll be the first to fucking see them. Genuinely very happy with how it's come along. And, of course, my Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash gokanaru. You can watch five unreleased main channel Gokunara videos. This is a clip channel, main channel Gokunara videos. Um, beyond that, join my Discord, you know, and sub to my main channel because we are about to release the commentary video of the year. It's going to be a lot of fun at the very least. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. As always, if you watch to this point, you're a goat, you're a legend. And, uh, yeah, this Gaddafi official video, uh, in my opinion, is worth your time if, you know, you're interested in the situation. So, thank you again. After that, you get a... Bye-bye. <laughs>